the greyhound industry, my friends, we're going to touch on it because it is a huge industry and we all know about it. We have one of the best stadiums for anything. Wouldn't matter if they put on a hurling match in the green area in the middle of Curraheen Park, for example. It would be one of the best places to watch a match. It's a fabulous place to go for a night out. It's a great buzz. It's a great crack. But the greyhound industry is in serious trouble. It is in very serious trouble. And we have been contacted by people who want us to talk about it. So we're going to do that next. 1850 715 996. The Opinion Line. With the Irish Daily Mail, Cork's best value family newspaper. Cork's 96 FM. Junior Forecasters on Cork's 96 FM. Hi, this is Nick from The Breakfast Show. You can't change the weather, but you can make it more fun. That's why Junior Forecasters take over on Friday mornings. How are you? Good. Oh, I'm excellent and beautiful. <laughs> excellent and beautiful. Is this true that you once almost blew up your mum's coffee table? Yes. Do you fancy doing the weather for the weekend? Kind of, yeah. yeah. Anything that annoys you that adults do? Mostly times they don't listen to you. Who do you boss around at home? Mum? Mum. Disappointing <laughs> if your kids want to let Leaside know what the weather holds, just go to 96fm.ie. Junior Forecasters on Cork's 96fm. <laughs> Call the opinion line. This is what you came for. 1850-715-996. Cork's 96fm. Now, we were contacted by Stephen Burke, who describes himself as coming from a family steeped in greyhound tradition. He says his father won the Derby in 2001 and has run a successful stud for over 30 years. But he says that the industry is now in serious danger of collapse. Numbers are down, profits are down, but it supports up to 10,000 full and part-time jobs. Attendances are down from 1.4 million a year to just under half that in the last couple of years. It it, it really does seem to be crumbling and he asked us to speak to Pascal Taggart who is the entrepreneur much credited with having built the industry to what it was in its glory days Pascal, good morning Morning PJ, and I can confirm that Corrine Park is the best Greyhound Stadium in the world It's a magnificent place, and I I go there two or three times a year with friends, I don't know the back end of a dog from the front (laughs) of it, but I have a wonderful night out And it's it's that's that's what it's all about, it's a great leisure sport and that's what it's all about, and Corrine Park is, is He's still the best, you know. But why is the industry seemingly falling apart? I mean, there's a strike on... They closed Harold's Cross. Shelburne Park is being picketed. The industry is falling apart. Why? Well, it's very, very simple. It's due to incompetence, you know. I mean, (laughs) when things fall apart, it's due to people doing the wrong things. I mean, let's just start with Harold's Cross. Harold's Cross has been there since 1928. It's a working man's greyhound track of Dublin. It's very successful, and it's the second most profitable track in Ireland. Mm. Even more profitable than Corrine Park. So why but does un- it? But unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, the facts are, and these facts will be borne out tomorrow in the PAC, which people can watch on their computer or on their phone, where the, GA, the Greyhound Board will be for the PAC, where they're going to get absolutely thrashed, hammered, savage. It'll be a blood sport. Why? <clears throat> the Public Accounts committee, committee for people who wouldn't who, who forget right. out the PA, and the Greyhound yeah, Board are, why are they being brought before the PA? Okay, well prize money is the lifeblood of both horse racing and Greyhound racing over the last six years they reduced that prize money by 31.4 million which is a colossal amount of money and that means that people in the Greyhound industry are getting out they're not breeding dogs they can't afford to race dogs and the thing is in a very perilous state you mentioned that the, the uh, attendances for ground racing in 2005 were 1.4 million. It's dropped now to 650,000. The total, which threw over 5 million, 6 million profit, has now gone down from 52 million to 18 million. And that's where all the money has gone. So what's happened now is they have to sell house cross. And unfortunately, you have two ministers there who have contributed greatly to this uh, decline. And in fact, over the last few weeks, I've been working behind everybody's back to sell Harold's Cross mm. to schools, 
to the Education Board. So we've now got Minister Coltney, Minister Creed and Minister Bruton conniving to sell Harves Cross to the Education Board to build schools. Now, you can't argue against schools, against Greyhound Racing, but this is the reason is that they're not doing it for that. They're doing this to prop up an inefficient organization who have lost their way in totality. Mm. They issued us a statement. David McManus from the Irish Greyhound Board um, admitted that it had been divisive but was essential. They say it was essential in order to reduce, reduce the enormous legacy debt that threatens the national industry. They also say the picketing at Shelbourne Park has meant no racing in Dublin for three months which is also costing money. The one worry we'd have down here, Pascal, I think, would be that this might eventually spread to our beloved Corrigan Park. No, I mean, I don't think it will, because there's not... Like, Bill Murphy and the guys down there, they don't want it to spread. And they're doing a very good job, and it won't spread. I mean, the thing about it is that we all look for Dublin. Dublin's the Croke Park. It's the Lance I know, the Viva. And without Shelburne Park, there is a lot of losses, you know? And all the good dogs are going to England and places like that. But I don't see it spreading, you know, and it should never spread because, I mean, people are on the bread line. Why take the bread away from them? You know, there's nothing less. They want to live in stones. So I don't see that. But what I do see is that these ministers are blaming the Endicon report for selling Harvest Cross. They've now gone behind everybody's back and they're selling it to the Department of Education. Mm. They're the people who should be answering. Now, what should they do? They should immediately ask the board and the chairman... And this guy, Dr. Brady, Dr. Brady, in 2006, single-handedly closed down the Irish Sugar Company. Yeah. He's now come in, single-handedly, after three or four weeks in the job, and padlocked the gates of Harvest Cross in the middle of the night. Like, you know, there's a few other rebels down there in Cork, and this makes me to be a rebel as well, because that gets right up my nose. <laughs> it really does, because, you know, without any... I fell in there for three weeks... Now, obviously, he had, the, he had the authority of the board and the chairman and the ministers. But the way they did it was despicable. This is like Cromwell. Cromwell or Black I saw it on the news. I saw it on the television news, literally, that people arrived to bring their dogs <laughs> in for a run or whatever the kind of training <laughs> one they do. And, 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 and the place is padlocked. Just one thing, and I suppose we'll, we'll know more when this all comes before the, the Public Accounts Committee. But one group of people, one group of that will not be mourn for a second the problems in the industry and in fact would, would, would wish that it would escalate to the point where the whole thing is shut down would be animal rights campaigners because they believe it's, 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 this is a very cruel sport. Yeah, well you see look, every sport is cruel. Horse racing is cruel. Stephen racing is cruel. Pet, all pets are cruel to an extent. The greyhounds are looked after so well it's not true. These, these people talk about the, the cutting off ears. There might be one in a million greyhounds that happens to you know, you see them around. People look after these greyhounds better than look after their children, or as well as. So animal rights will always be with us. You know, spend a wee bit of time and cruelty to children as well. You know, I mean, mm. we've all these things with us. We've all... We'd, okay, I was asked to ask you by, by a man called Darren who asked us to ask you this question. He said, yeah. do you believe, and he asked me to ask you this directly, do you believe it's okay for thousands of dogs to be killed in the name of entertainment? Sorry, I, 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 I absolutely do because it's thousands of race horses around the world killed for the same. There's crowds of the pet dogs. It's not killed. I mean, they put, most of them are kept alive. Or sorry, some of them are kept alive, and there are ones who, at the end of their time, they're injured or that. I do. I mean, look, you can't have a sport. You can't have camel racing. You can't have horse racing. You can't have dog racing without uh, a euthanasia problem. But it has to be done properly and correctly. Absolutely. Okay. All right, Pascal, we'll watch it with interest when it comes before the, the Public Accounts Committee. Thanks very much for that, Pascal Taggart, uh, the man who credited with building the greyhound industry. And he said, look, that's the nature of sport. Sometimes, if animals are involved in sport, sometimes animals are going to die. But Aideen Urell from Irish Council Against Blood Sports, Aideen, I suppose those words ring very hollow with you. Good morning. Well, absolutely. He's, he's said it himself. Uh, you have to put them down. That's absolutely dreadful and thousands are put down and in the name of what a sport and a bit of profit well in the name of something that it employs in fairness now to you know you have to look at it in, to, in totality it employs thousands of people in full and part-time jobs it sounds like it's not employing too many now and it's, it's in decline but i mean imagine a sport 
that's predicated on cruelty. It's absolutely, it's based on cruelty and and greyhounds are disposable commodities. A greyhound's natural lifespan is 14 years mm. and in the greyhound industry, it's three to four years. And after they stop winning in the track, that's it. And would there you say the four, same for horse racing, Aideen? I would, actually, because uh, horses are, are killed in horse racing. Uh, there, there's there's huge numbers in England every year. We don't know how many in Ireland, but I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about the, the greyhound racing for the moment. If, um, so do you think, uh, yeah, well, we, we are going to run short and we can come back to this, but do you believe it's time to let the industry go? Absolutely. And do and you know that uh, hair coursing is part of that industry? Imagine. And there's other, as, apart from the dogs, uh, they're, they're being disposable commodities. There's also the doping that goes on. Okay. There's the blooding of greyhounds using small animals, and it is widely practiced. Okay. It's, a, it's a training method that's widely practiced. Okay. We will come back to this. I am over time, Aideen. I'm sorry for being so late and getting to you, but I let you start your point, and I let you finish it on another day. I do apologize for cutting you off, only because of time.